Hers was the kind of love that demanded to be seen and felt. It was fierce and extraordinary. We're going to invite the party to come in, as we call you. And so I'm going to invite this time the groom to make his entrance. The groom. And of course, the groom must not leave his best man. In case he decides to run away. And now we're going to have the entry of the parents of both the bride and the groom. And for this evening, I'll enter from here. of the bride and groom. In, in memory of our dear Lady Jan, uh, we have marked a chair especially for Overseer Monroe. And so he has a chair with that lovely, beautiful floral setting on it for this evening. So come, you can come now, um, parents. So I want to put your hands together for the parents of the bride, the parents of the groom. And 50% of the parents of the groom is up here, 50% is walking up. Right, so um, the, the, the seat with the floor, floral arrangements here for um, Elder Monroe, and then the bride's parents. We'll sit on the other side. Yeah. yeah. And now we're going to have the entry of the wedding party.
party. So you would have um, noted that we asked you um, over Simone wrote to leave that chair with the lovely flowers, um, beautiful setting free. So Bishop had to remind me a while ago that um, Lady John says to get up and sit under the chair. So she's right there beside me. Is there anybody who would like to substitute for the bridesmaid?
Okay, the ladies are here. Crystal across there as a male. I do know I'm yours and you're mine. Special entrance for you. Make me feel like heaven is a real place. I bet on this because I know it's the real thing. You make me feel like heaven is so far away. Because with you, I know I got the real
Yeah, we're gonna welcome the flower girl and the little ring bearer. Oh, what we've been through, no one else knows. Cause all that matters is how far this goes. And it will go until it starts again. Sarai and Michael. I'm the only one. You're the only one. Together to never. I'm talking about Come on, Sarai. Come on, Sarai. Just a couple of Put your hands together for the bridal party. What a beautiful entrance. So now we're going to have the charge and the scripture read by Mrs. Faith Collins. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though one might prevail against another, two will withstand one. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. The charge. Marriage is a commitment to life. The best that two people can find and bring out in each other. It offers opportunities for sharing and growth that no other relationship can equal. It is a physical and emotional joining that is promised for a lifetime. Within the circle of its love, Marriage encompasses all of life's most important relationships. A wife and husband are each other's best friend, confidant, lover, teacher, listener, and critic. And there may come times when one partner is heartbroken or ailing, and the love of the other may resemble the tender caring of a parent for a child. Marriage deepens and enriches every facet of life. Happiness is fuller, memories are fresher, commitment is stronger, even anger is felt more strongly and passes away more quickly. Marriage understands and forgives mistakes life is unable to avoid. It encourages and nurtures new life, new experiences, and new ways of expressing a love that is deeper than life. When two people pledge their love and care for each other in marriage, 
They create a spirit unique unto themselves, which binds them closer than any spoken or written words. Marriage is a promise, a potential made in the hearts of two people who love each other and takes a lifetime to fulfill by Edmund O'Neill. Thank you so much. The scholars, you put your hands together for her for me. Now we're going to have a recording of the story. Let's hear it, how it all began. I know we all ended up here. So we're going to have a recording right now of a story to be played. Still Thank you so much as you listen and enjoy. The concrete floors of our church. Her eyes were bright and her smile was wide as the day she hopped off the stairs and asked me to be her friend. My mouth betrayed me then with a firm vocal no in response. But I felt my heart counter with an unequivocal yes. She became my best friend, my confidant, and my rock. Her presence was intoxicating and like a whirlwind, she swept me into her. I offered no resistance to the feeling that engulfed me. I was free falling into her without parachutes or safety nets. I didn't vocalize everything, but I knew exactly what I felt for her. It was love. I loved the way her head tilted to the right and her nostrils flared when she laughed. that she was selfless, patient, and kind. Hers was the kind of love that demanded to be seen and felt. It was fierce and extraordinary. It was a spark that lit up my entire world. My heart demanded more after being separated for 10 years. I yearned to be with her again. She was more beautiful than I could ever imagine. Her smile was still stirring something within me that was unexplainable. How could I ever let her go again? She had captured my entire being and there was no going back. Like a magnet, he drew me into him and he became the greatest love I had ever known. His presence was always a comforting warmth and that quickly became my haven. From the very first day I saw his quirky smile and the way he shyly hid behind his brothers, I knew I would have been able to pull him out of his shell. But the truth is, he is the one that pulled me. He pulled on my every emotion. He pulled out my fears. He pulled out my successes and my failures. He enveloped me into bliss. Our ten years apart were replete with nothing but void-filling decisions. I often wondered if he thought about me the way I thought about him. I knew I needed. I needed him the same way I needed to breathe fresh air. Our chemistry was undeniable, no doubt, but would it have been the same after all this time? Within a week, I figured out the answer to my question. He was still everything to me. His was the hand I wanted to hold at the end of a long day. He was still the man I need to unscrew caps off bottles and reach the highest cupboards. His calming voice was always enough to still the tumultuous tide in my emotions. He was still my person. I was skeptical though, and when I told him of the darkness within me, he looked at me like I was the sun. He remained consistent and unwavering in his love and devotion. His love created a blanket for me to rest in, and because of that, I reciprocated. Beautiful story. Kings and queens. Came out of the romance books.
And so, having heard the story, it's time for you to allow the bride to come in. So I'm going to invite you to stand in a mark of respect as we now allow the father of the bride to take her to the party. Before moving to the next session, it's important that you get your vehicles out of the way. There's a medical emergency, and the following persons are blocking the vehicle that takes a person to the hospital. A Toyota Prado 7089JW. <laughs> Sounds like Bishop's boss. This was Mrs. Prado. <laughs> 2927KD is a Kia Sonnet. 1772HM, a BMW 5059GS. Four seven JA. A Kia again, 5322KC at Kingston College. And um, a land cruiser, 1746 EX. Please, remove your vehicle right now. Someone needs to deal with a medical emergency. Thank you so much. God bless you. Let's return to the celebration. Put your hands together for them again. Come on, man. Do it like you really need to do it. Beautiful, beautiful. 
Beautiful. And before we even go into the, we're going to go into a mini worship session. I'd like to ask Overseer, your job is not over yet, sir. I want to stand in close by because we're going to call on you to do something else. All right. Okay, that's where you are. And so we're going to have now a, a mini worship se session with a song to be played. Thank you. seated guests you take me just as I am you choose me all over again I am the one you love I am the one you love I don't have to prove anything there's room at the table for me I am the one invite you to bow your heads while we pray. Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, our King, we thank you this afternoon, Lord, for your, your blessings to us, the gift of life. We thank you this evening, Lord, that we can come together on this special occasion as Tavari and Rojan pledge their love and their commitment to each other. We just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for taking us safely here. Thank you, Lord God, for all of your goodness and your mercies. Indeed, you have been good to us, and we bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray that as we come in celebration of marriage that you have instituted, we declare, Lord, that a man should 
leave more than father and cleave only unto his wife and they both shall be one flesh. We want to invite you now, Lord, to be with us as you always are. We ask you to tabernacle right now in these proceedings. Thank you for the weather you have given to us. Thank you, Lord God, for the guests that have come in to share with them, parents, friends. We pray, Lord God, that throughout this ceremony, you will get the glory. You will get the praise. You will be exalted as you manifest your glory and tell you thanks now. Take over. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I will introduce Bishop Otto. Let the church say amen. Let the people of God say amen. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of Almighty God and in the presence of this company to join this man and this woman in the holy estate of matrimony. This should not be entered into lightly or unadvisedly, but on the converse, advisedly, discreetly, and in the fear of Almighty God. Into this estate, these two persons come now to be joined. And if any man or woman have any reason why they may not be lawfully joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter be quiet. There be no objection, everybody say amen. One hurdle has been crossed. Sir and ma'am, I require and charge you both that if either of you know any impediment why you may not be lawfully joined together, that you do now confess it. For be you well assured that if any persons are joined other than God's word doth allow, their marriage is not lawful. Let the church say amen. I was listening out to see if there would be somebody would have been saying, yes, there are some reasons. I will be proposing some questions. I'd like you to respond. You can respond in the affirmative, the negative, but we'll be listening to your response as we ask the question. Tavari Golid, will you take this woman to be thy wedded wife, to live together after God's holy ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you pledge your loyalty to her and promise to love, honor, comfort and keep her in health and in sickness, in prosperity and adversity, and keep yourself only unto her so long as you both shall live. Let the church say amen. If you didn't hear, he said yes, sir. Roshan Allen. We now take this man to be thy wedded husband, to live together in the holy estate of matrimony. Will you love him, serve him, honor him, and keep him only unto yourself as long, rather keep you unto him as long as you both shall live? Let the church say amen. Another hurdle has been crossed. Who give it this woman to be married to this man? I'd like you to do it again. Take her right hand and hand him her right hand. Right, and your job is finished. Thank you. <laughs> 
Great dad, great dad. I'd like you to turn around facing each other and you're going to hold hands and repeat after me. Tavara, let's begin with you. I, Tavara Golin, take the Justin, I pronounced that right? Rosen Harlin to be my wedded wife. Repeat after me. I take the to have and to hold from this day forward for better or poorer. Richer, Richer or poorer, or poorer. <laughs> in health <laughs> and in sickness, in sickness. To, love and to, cherish, to love and to cherish, and to this I make you my pledge. You my pledge. Somebody say amen. amen. Roshan, you're going to repeat after me. I, Roshan Allen. Take the Tavaro Golden. Tavari Golden. Somebody say him in over there. Amen. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forth. From this day forth. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. Till death do us part, according to God's holy ordinance, I give you my pledge. Thank you. Somebody give them a clap. Who has the written? Did you feel a raindrop? Somebody say amen. amen. I want you to bow your heads with me while you're seated. Father, we consecrate these rings in this union as we join this man and this woman together as one. You decreed in your word that it is for this cause a man shall leave his mother and father and shall be cleaved to his wife and the two shall no longer be twain but shall be one. Let these rings continue to symbolize love, togetherness. Be a monument in their lives as the years go by. They will reflect on this very afternoon when they were gathered on this very beautiful lawn and confessed their love one for another. Bless them, for we ask it in your precious name, and somebody say, hey Amen. Repeat after me. With this ring, with this ring, Tavara. With this ring, with this ring, I the wed, I the wed, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord, push Jesus. it on, man. <laughs> Go ahead. With this ring, with this. Ring with this ring and an ex and as an expression of my love for you. <laughs> of my love for you. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. Push it on. You can do better than that. Put your hands together for the bride and the groom. I know the rain is about to fall, 
but I'd like to invite you to stand as I pray over their lives. Your heads bowed. We believe that you have designed this very afternoon, this very hour, for your servants to stand in this gathering and to be joined together as a man and wife. And so we commend them to you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus and pronounce the blessing upon their lives from the head. Hallelujah to the toe. Bless them as they go out and they come in. Bless them as they cohabit together. Bless them in their homes. Bless the offsprings that you will give to them. Oh God, bless their families. Help them to be an example. Oh God, you have been a Jehovah Jireh, so we pray that those will be open for them. And you will provide much more than we can even expect of you. I pray that thou wouldst give them good health, my God. And above everything else, my God, their love for you oh, will be intact. In all of their doings, they will not forget, oh God, that there is a God who rules and reigns in their lives. We commend them before you right now and ask in the name of Jesus that thou wouldst bless them everlastingly for we ask it in your precious name everybody say amen we're not going to have a feet washing ceremony and so I invite you to be seated while they will do their part Yes, we want you to turn around so everybody sees what you're doing. This will be the, perhaps the first time, but it certainly won't be the last. You're going to have a lot of uh, foot to wash in the future. <laughs> Throughout the Bible, there are many instances when foot washing was practiced. It was seen as a token of reverence offered to guests when they visited another's home. However, the greatest example of this act was offered on the very last night of Jesus' life as he washed the feet of his disciples as a sign of submission and humility to those he loved. When Peter initially refused to have Jesus wash his feet, Jesus replied, Unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. With this being said, Today, you will all bear witness to Tavari and Rajan washing each other's feet as a symbol of humility, devotion, and complete surrender to one another. Through this powerful and spiritual act, Tavari and Rajan wish to demonstrate their love, honor, and respect for each other. But most importantly, this represents their promise of servanthood to one another. Both Tavari and Rajan have made a commitment to continuously be willing to serve each other in their marriage. They can now confidently say, Saying to Rajan, I belong to you. I belong to you. <laughs> <laughs> and Rajan, you say to Tavari, I belong to you.
on, show your appreciation. Throughout the Bible, there are many instances when foot washing was practiced. It was seen as a token of reverence offered to guests when they visited another's home. However, the greatest example of this act was offered on the very last nights of Jesus' life, as he washed the feet of his disciples as a sign of submission and humility to those he loved. When Peter initially refused to have Jesus wash his feet, Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. With this being said, today you will all bear witness to Tavari and Rajan washing each other's feet as a symbol of humility, devotion, and complete surrender to one another. Through this powerful and spiritual act, Tavari and Rajan wish to demonstrate their love, honor, and respect for each other. But most importantly, this represents their promise of servanthood to one another. Both Tavari and Rajan have made a commitment to continuously be willing to serve each other in their marriage. They can now confidently say, Put your hands together for them again. And so now we're going to be having the signing of the register. And so I'm going to invite Tavari and Rojan to come by the, t by the table, as well as his best man and his chief to come, and the chief of the bride to come. And I invite at this time um, Simone Gardner to be doing a solo. The bridal party, you can be seated. You can be seated if you wish.
Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Tavari Golden. Make some noise in the house. Give you long life and also give you a boy and a girl. <laughs> Those whom God has joined together, let no man put asunder. With the authority invested on me as the marriage officer in the island of Jamaica. Are you ready, sir? Okay, all yours. Don't let your mother see them. Do you want to see more? Yes. Thank you very much. Do you want to see more? 
that's enough. I'm going to ask you to remain in place as the bride and groom march out on the bridal party. Allow them. Mr. Music. And just before they go, when, you, when, when they have exited, please go to the poolside for some cocktails. Please don't utilize the main dining areas yet. We're going to invite you to go by the poolside and um, you will served. All right? Thank you.
God bless you and he covers you and uh, all the best and joy. Yes, Rojan, my neighbor from birth. I'm so happy to see your progress. I'm so happy to see that today is your great day, one of those great days and landmarks in our lives. All the best. We wish you prosperity, peace, progress, protection, and provision in Jesus' name. you guys nothing but the best many blessings and may you guys live a long and happy life together just want to say a big congratulations to rj and tavari i hope your marriage is filled with love blessings happiness and continue to strive and reach for the stars and i love you guys oh john and my bro tv tavari Wishing you a happy and healthy marriage. Mm -hmm. May God continue to bless you both and be in the midst of the marriage. Yes, we are. All right. All right, so my name is Deandre Paul. I'm a, I'm a good friend of Tafari Golden. I just want to wish him and RJ a happy marriage, happy life. I hope they make a lot of kids. <laughs> uh, I've only known Tavari and Rojan for very briefly, but. Uh, they're both amazing people, and I wish them a lifetime of happiness and blessings. All right, hey, forever and always to Rojan and Tavar. What a wonderful couple. We really enjoyed ourselves celebrating with you and witnessing with you today that awesome move. I think it was a great move of God, and we hope that you will love forever, live forever, hope forever, have the, as many children as possible, and let this generational uh, blessing go on and on. God bless you. We love you. Coming from Auntie Marie.
For so many years I thought I'd never find you You have come into my life and made me whole Forever Let me wait to see you each and every morning let me hear you whisper softly in my ear. In my eyes, I see no one else but you. There's no other of my love. Yes, I always want you near me. I've waited for you for so long. Lady, your love's the only love I need. And the sun. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. 
No, no, I, I rode on a horse from St. Thomas to get here. And that's the kind of thinky, thinky response I get. Let, let's try it again. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. All right, thank you, thank you. Put your hands together for the bride and the groom. They are not here. You don't need to look back. They're not ready. They're still doing their pictures. But while we're waiting, I just wanted to give each table an assignment so that when the time comes, you'll be ready. Now, we may not have time to call on every table because we don't want to be here beyond midnight. So we're going to ask each table to discuss amongst yourselves one word that best describes the bride. And so the odd number tables, so table one, table three, table five, table seven, I think we have about eight or so. You will do the bride, one word that describes the bride. However, if it is that your table is a table that really doesn't know the bride, you know the groom, then you're at liberty to switch. And then the others know, two, four, six, eight. You would come up with one single word that describes the groom. And the same thing applies. If you really don't know the groom, then it's pointless to try to describe him. So you may switch to the bride. We'll do some other things, some other fun things. But in the meantime, I notice some of you are enjoying each other's company. So we want to encourage that. Don't just sit there. Um, get to know the, the persons at your table as you socialize and just chit chat a bit. But again, we welcome you on behalf of the bride and the groom and we'll be getting started as soon as they are done with their picture taking and are ready to enter. So, Mr. Music. Will you please play?
Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the moment we've been waiting on has finally arrived. The bridal party is here. The bride and groom are also here. Put your hands together as we make them welcome. And coming in first, we have Abigail and Siobhan. Come on, let me hear, let me hear, let me hear. I see your face. Who 
and family what a wonderful evening this has been and we just are so excited so at this time we are going to have a group dance this is the we're gonna have two dances so there is the first dance you are the reason and then there is the father and daughter So, you know which, is it the group one first? Or? So we're gonna have the group dance. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Ravens, we take it over! <laughs> after the show, it's after party day. After the party, it's so tell lobby day. After the NEC, we go no one split. And after a couple man, no man got love to take. Yes, ma, back it up, the kid that money has spent. Well, I'm a team, now you're so short, the whole of your friend. My talent has enough to miss and in back is on tape. Well, everybody has shown. Real as they want to take it. So what she wants? Hot pass, keep it when you be there. Swing your one from left to right, and know the side of my day. Do them like a whipping at me, and me now look up for enough of them. Yeah, you talk with them, see we them now, they're not there. Booms, hot, make sure you swing your hand there. When them come to you with arguments, make sure you run there. Happy, you live your life, and make money, we're not a problem. I'm not going to talk to them, make us say them, but we're not a problem. Booms. Mm, 
Together, put your hands together, put your hands together. Amen. I wonder if, I wonder if they can dance to this one. This man is not an ordinary man. He came with a master plan to break the yokes and loose every shackle. He came into the world with fallen man to tabernacle. Put your hands together for them, ladies and gentlemen. And now for the other dance, a special moment. Oh, Father and daughter you have no idea what's going through these two minds no idea so let's just revel in the moment with them as they dance together father and daughter You know, on these special occasions, it's really, it's really memories that are being made. And we have to cherish the moments. We have to uh, just really cherish these special moments. And so, as we get ready to watch them and enjoy the evening with them, we enjoy the ceremony. And here we are at this part two. The second phase, we are looking forward to some great moments as we continue celebrating with Rojan and Tavari on this their very special day. And so we're lining up the song and we're going to watch them and just continue having a great time. Ladies and gentlemen, wow, wow, wow. Has anybody seen Bishop Otto? Is Bishop Otto in the room? I think he left. No, no wonder we're having all this. Um, uh, I was, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's invite Tavari to come as we now have another dance. The first dance between... Tavari and Rojan. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, 
Just wow, just wow. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together once more. For this beautiful bride and handsome groom. We can see a lot of work went into preparations. But at this time, we're going to invite Pastor Martel Wisdom to come and he will be blessing the meal. Um, so, Pastor Wisdom, God bless you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's all stand. This is the best part uh, yeah, of the festivities, uh, the meal. So I hope you reserve at least 30 minutes for me to get through this part. Let's close our eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name. We honor you, Jesus. We thank you for bringing us together one more time, Lord God, in this fashion, Lord. To witness, Lord God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Rajan, hallelujah, and Tavari come together in holy matrimony. We pray your blessing on their lives, Lord God. And we pray you may prosper them in everything that they do. As we are about to eat of what has been prepared, we pray you may bless it, sanctify it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. And so, please listen carefully to the instructions. The head table, both head tables will be served. And there may be one or two other persons or tables. But everybody else is asked to join the buffet line.
which is this direction, right? And so while they're serving the head tables, um, I wasn't told whether you should start the buffet lines before these are served or not, but no, after. So once these are served, we will instruct you table by table to just head to the buffet station where you can be served. You know, talking about food. Next month, we'll make 40 years since I did what Roja and Tavara did today. Married to the same woman for 40 years. <laughs> and when we were celebrating our 35th anniversary, she wanted to take me to Hawaii. So I said, but baby, if you take me to Hawaii for the 35th, what are you going to do for the 40th? She said, don't worry, I'll come back and get you. So I said, you know what, it's all right, I'll stay right here. <laughs> Forget Hawaii. <laughs> but people ask me, how, how, how do you do it? 40 years. Uh, two simple things, man. Two simple things. I said, what's that? Tavari, I hope you're listening. I, I've been in this thing for a long time. And I know a thing or two. <laughs> If you, one of the things, if you want your marriage to last, eat her cooking, eat her cooking, and let her talk. Yes. Amen, wives. <laughs> so the food is coming, and we want you to enjoy your meal. And like we said, as soon as the head tables have been served, you will be invited to join the buffet line. All right. So. At this time, we're going to be favored with a song, a medley of songs, by Simone Gardner. Come on, put your hands together for her.
desire When we wake up And then we make love It makes me feel so nice You're my water when I'm stuck in the desert You're the talent all I take when my head hurts You're the sunshine on my life
Now, I bet some of you didn't know that you've been listening to live music. I mean, if you're down this end, you probably would because he's standing right here. But I just heard somebody up, up there say, what? I, I didn't know it was live music. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together once more. For saxophonist extraordinaire. Bless you, good, good, good stuff, good stuff. And, and I'm told that the song that was done during the ceremony for Roja is an original that was written just for her. Come on, come on, give it up, give it up, give it up. You know, as an old choir master, Anytime I hear somebody singing, you know, people sing, they hear music and they just sing along or something comes to their mind and they just start singing. And I always say to them, I don't know them, I just go up and say, tell me something. What did you do with all that money? And they're like, what money? I said, the money your mom gave you for singing lessons. <laughs> because clearly you didn't go to the lesson. And, and if, if they can't sing, I don't run that joke with them because they mightn't take it too, too funny. But when they can sing and they can hold a tune, they probably get a little jolted, but I say, keep on singing, you, you, you can sing. So I would even have run that joke this evening. This is real good stuff, real good music, real good singing, real good playing. Put your hands together once more for them. And she's a former schoolmate of Roger. So, congratulations, congratulations. Well, well, I don't know if you are like me, but I'm, I'm kind of fed up, honestly. I'm fed up, all that chicken. Uh, what else was in the plate? Um, I'm fed up, I mean, <laughs> you know. But we want, we want to go into the next phase because we know it's getting late. And so we're going to invite to unveil the cake at this time. Mrs. Gillian Thomas, Pastor Gillian Thomas, and First Lady Golden to come, the mother of the groom. And of course, Gillian is my wife of 40 years. <laughs> and she, along with Peter and Anne, were responsible for coordinating the wedding and arranging the decorations. And so, of course the cake has been unveiled so we can see it clearer and we can move into the cutting of the cake. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. These two wonderful mothers who have just unveiled the cake. And now we're going to invite uh, the bride and the groom to make their way to the cake table. Earlier today, when Bishop Otto pronounced them man and wife, he said he had been counseling them but never saw them kiss. So we saw them kiss for the first time this evening, all of us, at least in public. <laughs> but now we're going to see them do something else together. <laughs> so, and we're going to ask someone to bring a glass of wine. We're going to need a glass of, a, a bottle of wine. So after they cut the cake, they can have something to wash it down. So, uh, Rojan and Tor, go ahead, do your thing. Let me see. 
غزل نائف Stick it in. And at the count of three, you are going, now remember, this is not a race. Right? You're not competing with each other. You're complementing each other. So at the count of three, you are going to cut that cake. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Are you, are you watching? You have your cameras up? Are you ready? One. Two. Three. All right, so go ahead and cut, cut a little piece out. There's got to be a little feeding here of each other. He said to worry, just resting his hand on hers, just making sure they're, they're doing it together and all of that good stuff. Look like him can help himself, man. <laughs> So, I want you now to take a little piece. You must have an idea of how much she eats. Now, he, he took it up with the fork. Is that okay with you? Some say yes, some say no. What do you mean? The majority said no. Well, to worry, you have a problem. They, they said no fork. Unless you will use a fork to put it in your mouth. Oh. Man, learn fast, man. <laughs> All right, watch it now. Take your time. Take your time. Go, go, go ahead now. Take your time. Go ahead now. No, 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 no. Far it to far it first. Far it to far it first. Then you take time and come down on the, the nose. And then you go, oh, there you go now, there you go now. <laughs> All right, Rojan, it's your turn. Let's see what you're going to do now. Go ahead now. This is my love. All right, come on, you have to do better than that, no? He didn't get it? He didn't get any? Boy, tomorrow, sorry, feel good. <laughs> Rojan, they're saying, they're protesting. They're saying you didn't feed him. You ate it all. I don't believe you. <laughs> she says too good. Oh, one more try. Come on. All right, I, I'm sure you got it this time, right? You got it tomorrow? Good. Now, you're gonna take up the wine glasses and I don't know what you plan to do. All right. They're doing their thing. And at the count of three, one, Two, three. All right. Boy, the very thirsty boy. <laughs> Both of them as a matter of fact. Come on, put your hands together for them. Thank you, thank you. Thank you as the groom, along with his beautiful bride, Return to their seat.
So now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move right into the toast. And the first toast is going to be to the bride and Miss Abigail McKenzie will be proposing this, followed by the toast to the groom by Mr. Siobhan Burrell. Come on, let's put our hands together for her as she comes. Good night, everyone. Hi, I'm Abby. Are we feeling good this evening? It's a very monumental occasion. It's a great night. We're celebrating two wonderful people. I have the honor to toast the bride. The honor to toast the bride. Can we all put our hands together for Rojan? Isn't she beautiful? Isn't she stunning? Isn't she radishing? You look amazing, friend. You look fabulous. Honestly, I have never seen a more beautiful bride and girl. <laughs> so tonight, I just want to say a few words. Firstly, it is an honor to be a friend of Rojan's. She is, she is a filler. You know, every space that she goes into, she adds value. Every life that she enters, she blesses. And I think that everyone here can agree to that. So she's made you laugh. She's, made, she's touched your heart. She's blessed you in some way, one way or another. Rojan, I know that you're going to be a phenomenal wife. Tavari, I would say that you know you're very blessed to have my friend, but I see she's also blessed to have you. Did you guys see the bling? <laughs> Did you guys see that? I'm very proud of the relationship that you both share and of the life that you're about to enter into together. I do not want to dwell, I don't want to dwell too much on just Rojan and just the amazingness of tonight because we're all in it and we're all able to feel what is going on. I remember when Auntie Janet just passed, Rojan and I were on the phone and I was like, this doesn't even make sense to me. And I was going through, there's one book for Auntie Janet that I have, Banquet of Wines. And we are in a Banquet of Wines tonight. Yes? Yes? There's one book for Auntie Janet that I actually have at home. And I was going through it, you know, trying to get some inspiration. Trying to understand what it is that was taking place. And I, I met upon this particular part in her book, which I want us to just declare tonight over Tavari and Rojan's life, over their marriage even over your individual life, because I think this is a powerful declaration. So in her book, it is called The Authorization of Genesis 1, verse 28. I'm just going to ask you guys to repeat after me. Through the, the divine power that is invested in me. And now we're going to talk to the couple. Where there is lack, we authorize prosperity. Where there are limitations, we authorize expansion. Where there is decline, we authorize restoration. And where there is any form of defeat, we authorize victory. Where there is any sense of inferiority, we authorize a mind of superiority. And this really spoke to me. I pray that you guys' marriage is just a blessing. Continue to be a blessing in other people's lives, Rojan. I love you. I know everyone in this room loves you. We will continue to support you. We will continue to hold you up as you walk into this new chapter. Above all else, place God first, and I know it will be successful. God bless you. God bless everyone. Wow. And as Siobhan comes, it is beginning to sound very prophetic in here. I like that. I just want to add to that. 
May you never be so poor, Siobhan and Rojan. Tavares. <laughs> May you never be so poor, Tavares and Rojan, that all you have is money. And that's deep because money is just one of several currencies in the kingdom of God. And money is the least of them. May you be blessed with favor and faith and relationships that are far more valuable than money. God bless you. And now the toast. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to say, you know, South, thank you for allowing me to be, you know, your best man. Not only you are a brother to me, but first of all, you know what, stand up. Ladies and gentlemen, look how I'm dapper. Look how I'm all green. Yo, stand up on this one, see. Stand up on this one, let see. I just want to say, oh, this guy, just, um, I met him in Alaska. I was in 2017. It was the first time I'm going to work on travel. I was supposed to go in Alaska. And um, a friend, a mutual friend of ours said, yo, we need to go to Alaska. And I said, all right. I took the chance and I went there. And um, he wasn't there. He came late. He was supposed to be there as well. But um, long story short, before he came, the way how oh, impactful Tav was, um, the, the year before and the year before that, they kept talking about it. And they kept saying, yo, TV, if TV was here, you know, you would have so much fun, like, you know, like um, a, a friend and a brother. And like, when they found out that TV was coming, I was, um, I think I was in housekeeping, somewhere on the property. My manager ran, ran, come to me and say, yo, you know, TV's coming back. And I say, yeah? So I say, yo, how about a brother yourself? Yeah, like, people, people want to like, gravitate to support. So, like, so I wanted to find out for myself. And trust me, like, I didn't even know like, how we ended up gel together. Like, the one we just become like a, a bond of friendship. Even after the work and travel um, process, we had birthdays together, we had dinners, we always kept, you know, close. And it was that I had to go so far. I'm glad that I had to travel so far to find a brother. I'm just truly really happy. You know? Two years ago now, um, I want to make Russian, it's very funny. Roger and a WhatsApp group. Roger found a WhatsApp group for this guy for, a break, for his birthday. Tell born February. Roger made a WhatsApp group in September. <laughs> September. She made that WhatsApp group and, she, and um, he didn't know. So I was like, who is this? And he said, no, I said, oh, um, you know, is Roger now my girl? I like, you know, is that the coach? And I said, I'm going to say, yeah. And like, that's the way she went about doing it. Like, they were planning a mess. Like, Trust me, the details and like, um, trust me, dedication, like four or five months in advance, trust me, that's really dedication right there. You understand? So like in February, when we finally met her, trust me, she was just a bit of fresh air. The way she talked about him, and the way she just treated him and so forth, and the way he just like, I felt like a leaf of, I felt like some relief was on, uh, um, let go of him, you know, like he was, he was just happy. And I, and I love that. And forever, and like from ever since after that two years, I just kept seeing it more. You get more happy, and I just love that. Like, the two of them, trust me. I just want the Lord to continue to bless them and guide them on um, hope for a prosperity uh, marriage. I'm more some, more, I don't want to be a godson here. Yeah? We're a godfather, godfather. So I want some, I want some good ones, you know, so forth. So yeah. Cheers. In other words, Tavar and Rojan, I wish you luck, I wish you joy. I wish you first a baby boy. And when his hair begins to curl, I wish you next a baby girl. <laughs> okay, table, table, table one. What was the one word that you came up with to describe the bride? Where's table one? Am I? Table one, did you come up with a word for the bride? Please stand and tell us what it is. Resourceful. Wow. And so say all of we. <laughs> all right, table two, do you have a word for the groom? One word that in your opinion, best. Huh? Delightful. All right. Okay, okay. 
All right. So at this time we're going to have um, Jordan to come again. Are you ready? Still eating? Oh, Calvin Williams. All right. So he's going to be doing uh, an instrumental at this time. And we've been enjoying the music so far. So let's put our hands together once more. And right after this, we're going to invite to propose a toast to the bride's parents and to the groom's parents. Associate Pastor Adela Allen will be coming first after the, the rendition. And she'll be followed by Miss Karen Coleman toasting the bride's parents and the groom's parents.
You can do better than that. Put those hands together. Once more. And so at this time, we're moving from the bride and the groom for toast now to the bride's parents and the groom's parents. everyone. Good evening, everyone. Let's try that one more time. Good evening, everyone. Amen. Amen. All right. Wow. It's been a beautiful evening. Certainly enjoy the dinner and the music and everything so far. First of all, I just want to say congratulations to my beautiful niece, uh, Rodan, and to Tavari. God bless you. I just want to, thank you. I'm here to give a toast to someone I've known for a very long time. In fact, I've known this person all my life. All right. Um, I'm here to toast the father of the bride and of course, um, uh, and the mother in her absence. I'm gonna go back in memory, way back, just a little bit, just to give you a background about this person. First of all, the father of the bride. It's truly an honor to be able to speak on Monroe's behalf. You know, Monroe has been a very fun-loving person he has excellent social skills. But at least three things stand out about Monroe. At least three. And that is, he's gentle, he's respectful, and he's committed. Before I go further, I'm just gonna ask this debonair dresser to just stand. Monroe, please stand. Oh my goodness, look at this, look at this gentleman. You know his nickname is Daddy Sharp. <laughs> no one could dress like this man. And, and I, like he said, no one can still dress like him. All right, thank you, Monu. I just wanted everybody to just see this debonair dresser, father of the bride. Talking about uh, gentle. When we were growing up, one of Monroe's siblings would make it an occupation to just tell, to report on the rest of their siblings about their wrongdoings. No finger pointing. And unfortunately, Monroe seems to get the brunt of it, maybe because he was a very active child. Monroe loved making and flying kites. And when those kites would give Monroe trouble, he would speak special or say special words. You know, special words. That the son of a preacher man shouldn't say. <laughs> At other times when dad would say, Monroe, don't go over by the neighbor's house. Don't go on their property. 
and steal their fruits. Mona would do that. And when confronted, when our father confronted Mono, and he looked around like Moses to defend himself, but when his eyes met four with one of his siblings, who is always reporting, oh my goodness, Mono, he just shook his head, hold down, held his head down, and just received the penalties. <laughs> well, big sister said, we, mm -hmm. Well, why am I telling you this? Because Monroe, in spite of being reported on so many times, in spite of being wait, sorry to say, Monroe never retaliated and he never took it out confession on me. <laughs> he never took it out on me. My brother is such a gentle person. And he would go right back the next minute and play with me. As if I never reported on him. But you know, this is the kind of person I've known Monroe to be. And this just, throughout his growing up years, Monroe remained a gentle person. To the extent that his high school teachers shared this with so many other people, that he's such a gentleman. And I've lived to see Monroe exercise those skills that I help him to develop. <laughs> to, uh, he has demonstrated that as a spouse and as a father to Rojan. Amen? Monroe has so many times spoken about um, his beautiful daughter, Rojan. He's a very hands on father. One that, yeah, oh yes, very involved from riding bikes, teaching how to ride bikes, to taking Rajan to the different activities, very hands on father. And I just want to acknowledge Monroe for your courage and your strength and being such an awesome, awesome father to Rojan. And let me just say that um, in, her, in her absence, Janet. Together, they have co-parented and done an excellent job in raising a beautiful daughter, Rojan. Here, here. Talking about being respectful, Monu uh, doesn't just respect uh, figures of authority, but just about everyone. He respects you as a person. And I have to give that credit to him, not because he's my brother, but these are the characteristics that we have seen in Monroe throughout the years. So you know that this is genuine, right? And so I want to say to um, even to Vary tonight that you have received, you are receiving another awesome father. Amen. Amen. And knowing that Rojan is so special to her dad and to know that Monroe has given you, has entrusted you with his daughter, you know that this is a big deal. Amen. Amen. And so, in recognition, I just want to raise our glasses and drink to Monroe's uh, uh, success and great health, favor with God and man, in the name of Yeshua. God bless you, one row. Come on, give it up one more time. One more time. Wonderful toast to her brother. And I don't know if you, like me, were surprised to hear some of the things about Monroe. I mean, I've known him for so many years, but I know you are multi-talented. But I did not know you were multilingual. And I, I, I was hoping 
that your sister would tell us some of the languages you spoke. But, you know, maybe, maybe for another time. Big up yourself. So, at this time, we're going to have a toast to the groom's parents, and this will be proposed by Miss Karen Coleman. Good evening, everyone. Oh, my God. What a wonderful evening. This evening, it is my delight, my pleasure. Um, words cannot express. Now, I have the pleasure of calling these two persons, mom and dad. So, mom and dad, please stand. Um, tonight, I represent Stephen and Ruel, who is not here, Tavari. Um, Daniel and Jamanda. So Ruel um, is Tavari's oldest brother, and then you have Stephen, and their wives is Amanda and Daniel, right? And um, I represent my sons as well, Rikelmi, Rick Anthony, and Rikaili. And um, I just want to say to you um, that these two persons are two wonderful human beings. So if you know anything from a psychological perspective, there's the nurture nature um, version of how you are raised. Now I was nurtured into this family because I was not born into the family. So at a tender age, um, my parents was having some existential crisis. You know, had a father who was sick and my mother, you know, had some existential issues. And so these two persons, you know, they saw me and saw what they saw in me and they decided to put me under their wings. And for that, I am, I am grateful. No, a lot of persons can call, can mother and can father and can parent once they have that child from their line. But check out somebody who can take a 60, 15 year old, and turn her into an elegant queen. Right. Right? And I will forever be grateful. Now, um, according to parenting is described from different perspectives. Um, you have the behavioral perspective, you have the functional perspective, and you have the humanistic perspective perspective. No, but what all of these theories have in common is that nurturing is important. A parent is important. At a certain point, if a child is not exposed to certain emotional, um, emotional, if their emotional needs are not tended to, it will cause issues. And so that is why we have a lot of crime and violence and all of these things, because some of these young men and women were not nurtured, are, are not natured into, although they were natured into the world, they were not nurtured. They were not cared for. They did not get the love and attention. At 15 years old, these persons loved me as if I was their own. There was no difference. And, and anybody who knows me would say, oh, once you see me walk or how I dress, it's Sandra. Right? You would not know that she's not my biological mother, but because you know the story. But Rajan, I just want to tell you that you are coming into a family that is capable of giving love from any stage. Right? Amanda and Daniel would share this with you, that these two persons are two wonderful women, man and woman of God. And I have grown to love them so much. Um, she is my heart. <laughs> she is absolutely my heart. Um, I remember when every Monday morning, dad would call me. And even now I have a cockiness. If you want to, if you're a man and you're trying to woo me, I'm sorry. It is very, very hard. Because I remember back in the days, every Monday morning, he would call me and he would say, Karen, remember you're beautiful. You are awesome. And so getting that from a man 
like if you approach me and you're telling me that I'm beautiful and I'm, and I'm uh, like, it doesn't matter because I already know. I already know. So dad, bad for you, I've missed a lot of opportunities because of that, you know, cockiness. So behind every young child who believes in him or herself is a parent who first believes. So Tavari, it all started with two wonderful persons who love and who believed in you. And tonight, we just want to salute you, sir and ma'am. And we thank you for raising such a beautiful young man. And so that Rajan is able to experience the warmth of a loving, kind, amazing young man who will certainly treat her like a queen. And I'm not just saying that because um, they are newlyweds. I'm saying that because that is who Tavari is. He is a wonderful young man. And sometimes I wonder if we are not biologically connected somehow because the flow, like they have three boys and I have three sons and the three kids are exactly the same. So the big one is just like Roel, my middle one is just like Steven and the last one is just like Tavari. Loving, poised, and everything. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to raise my glass to these two wonderful human beings. Thank you for raising a wonderful young man. Rajan, we want to welcome you. No, we're officially sisters. We are officially sisters. Um, and so, welcome into the family, Rajan. And Cheers to Mr. and Mrs. Golding, Bishop, no Bishop Golding, Bishop. God bless you. Cheers. The debate continues as to whether, which is, which is better, to, to have your own children or to adopt and or a combination of both and you know when you when you take someone in and love them as if they're your own it's it's an amazing it's an amazing undertaking and i know this i heard a story of this girl she was the real blood daughter of the parents but she was kind of a troubled teen you know so one day she said to her parents why you didn't give me out for adoption? And they said, we did, but they brought you back. <laughs> but Bishop Golding and his wife <laughs> never sent you back. <laughs> such love, such one just love. You know, and while, while she's giving advice, let me just give a couple too, because, you know, um, Albert Einstein was celebrating 50 years of marriage. Listen to this. And his friend said to him, boss, that's, that's, that's outstanding. 50 years? How did you do it? He said, oh, when we got married, my wife and I made a solemn assembly. And we have stuck to it and lived by it, and everything has been great since. They said, so what was that? He said, That's why we're together for 40 years, but let me tell you how I got her to call me Lord, and you can do it, and every husband here can do it. 
wives block ears. She she's cooking and she run out of an ingredient and she called and said, Eva, can you bring some you know olive oil or something or whatever it is? And I said, All right, baby, no problem. But I take long. I make several other stops. And when I get home, honey, I'm home. Lord Everton, why you take so long? Lord Everton, when you was on the stand, try that one, everybody. She called me Lord, man, yes. So. But at this time, at this time, we're going to have a toast to the wedding party, and this will be done by Miss Alyssa. Walker, put your hands together for Alyssa as she comes. Hi, good night. I just want to say it was a pleasure working with you, beautiful ladies. You guys are so poised and so gorgeous and elegant, and you guys are great, great friends to Rojan, and I'm just overwhelmed at how beautifully executed this whole thing was, and I cannot, cannot, I could not have asked for a better group of girls to have done this with. Thank you so, so much. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, one more, please. Thank you, Bishop. Tonight, I introduce to my right uh, a beautiful bunch of ladies whom have known Rojan from childhood, Vanessa, Veronica, from high school, Abigail and Alyssa, Blood, Petra, her cousin, and myself, Rochelle, AKA Team Golden Girls. <laughs> the planning and selection process started in March and we hit the ground running immediately. Our schedules varied and for two of, two of them, their geographic location as well. And so we kept tight communication via the world-renowned lifesaver WhatsApp. <laughs> Nonetheless, I must say any task assigned was well executed. Hats off to two very, 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 you trust me, you ladies don't know, you gentlemen in the audience don't know how supportive Alyssa and Abigail is. Two very selfless young women and it's very ad admirable. All right? And you also led our team so very well. Thank you, Maid of Honors. Thank you, bridesmaid, bridesmaids. To the beautiful Golden Girls, we lift our glasses. Let's do this again. Cheers. <laughs> here, here, come on, put your hands together. And so, uh, how much time do you have? How much do, do you? We're going to have at this time a family blessing, a wish. And this will be done by Overseer Royal Williams. Overseer. Amen. Good evening, everybody. You just hate the people's food. Come on, show some life. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. That's better. Um, this evening, I'm so glad, so proud of, as I call her, Miss Roger. Uh, we've been cousins for years. You, you, you don't get it, but and I'm um, so glad, so proud of me, of nephew. And um, it's a wonderful evening to see people come together. 
I heard Bishop saying he, he's um, he's been married for forty years, and he's uh, and he's uh, and he gets his wife to call him Lord. Well, when I go back home next week, I got an assignment. Uh huh. I gotta be called Lord Jesus too. I'm gonna find a way to do it. But we've been married for 36 years. As a matter of fact, August next, when, when is August? Yeah, we've been married for 36 years. That's a, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I could advise my nephew that one thing to do to, marry, to be married that long is to just, don't talk. Just get your ears open, listen, and let her talk, and it's gonna be all right. But as you know, we are here, so got part of Monroe, my my brother-in-law. Thank God for we have been we, we 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 have been very close over the years, and I mean I love Peter and uh, uh, Robert too, but Mother and I have been 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 we we been together, we we mesh together like that. But we're gonna ask to stand for a moment as we bless the family this evening. Uh, we're not gonna pray. We're just gonna bless the family and pronounce a blessing on the family. Are you with me this evening? So I want you to, in your own words, in your own, in your own words, just say a blessing to the Allen uh, Golden family. And now we have uh, Allen Golden together. That ain't that good? Our Golden Allen. Can we say it that way? So in your own way, in your own words, Let's pronounce a blessing on this family in this union this evening. Come on, let's open your mouth and say something. Father, I pronounce a blessing. Come on, use your own words. Use your own words, man. Upon these two families as they come together in one. The prosperity, health, God Almighty. I pray that their seed will be blessed. Uh, like Abraham said, that the sons of sure they'll be numbered. That they lack nothing. Come on, pronounce a blessing. That they'll always be in the spirit of worship and they'll be saved. Come on, pronounce upon them. God bless you as you raise your glasses this evening to the Golden Allen family. God bless. I pray for increase. I'm going to pray for increase today. Yes. Yes, just as Jabez said, Oh, that thou wouldst bless me and enlarge my territory. We speak it over your life, we declare it. That the favor of God will not just locate you, but elevate you. To where your very enemies become your footstools. The blessings of Almighty God be upon you. We speak it, we declare it, we touch and agree in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. I, I really feel a sweet anointing in this. We're having fun, we're laughing, we're eating, we're drinking, but this is such a spiritual uh, event. You know, marriage is really a picture of Christ and his church to the world. That's what it's all about. So that's what it's all about. So we thank God for marriages and we pray for every marriage represented here today. And so, Rojan and Tavari, you have invited all these people to your wedding, but please, don't invite them into your marriage. Yeah. You must have a confidant and somebody you can trust. But what's in your cup? stays in your cup. And, and as a matter of fact, saying that, let me just take care of this little business now because, like I said, marriage is serious. I am calling now, and I, I was going to do it privately, but I think we should just bring it out in the open. All the ladies who are pleased to the
<laughs> what you've just seen and witnessed is just for amusement purposes only. Right? Just, just so you know. <laughs> Please don't say seriously. <laughs> He's probably sweating up there. But <laughs> I hear you, Roger. <laughs> and so at this time, ladies and gentlemen, huh? are we there? Yes, very special moment at this time. I want you to stand and welcome to this microphone, Tevari, Mr. Tevari Golden. For the groom's reply. Uh, good night, everybody. As anybody knows me, I'm not really a talker, but I am absolutely elated to see every face here tonight. It's really a blessing to share our lives, me and RJ, with uh, Rojan, as you, you know her, um, with, with everyone here that the Spirit of God is in this room. You, you, you know, you're around persons who, who tabernacle with God and you feel it. And you feel it. So, there is an unexplainable feeling where there is a blessing over our lives and we accept it. We embrace it. We understand that we cannot operate off our own. We understand that with God in the center, we can smile at every situation. We understand what the purpose of praying together, fasting together, leaning on one another and not to another person. There is something where tonight, I want to open my arms and say thank you. There have been some persons here who really, uh, I haven't spoken to them ever in my life. And they have, I've always seen them, but never really spoken with them. And that is, would be, uh, two of those persons would be Lady Gillian and Bishop Everton Thomas. A very wise counsel, excellent pillars of strength in their own way. You could see it and you could feel it. Uh, Forty years is, is not a day in, in, in our time. And that is a very strong example. And my, my, my mother and my father sitting down there, I'm really happy they're here. <laughs> 37 years. And one person I'd really love to, to mention here, and I still feel her here, and I get emotional. <laughs> I'm sorry. But Lady Janet's still here. Right. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Lady Janet's still here. She's not here physically, but we can feel her presence here. And I thank her for the moments of counsel that she had with me privately. I thank her for sitting out with me for hours. Man, if you have time, if you don't have time, when she calls you, <laughs> you better make time. Because she's going to talk to you. Thanks, Bill. Um, there's so much I want to say, but I, I, I don't want to keep everybody here too much longer. Um, I'm, I'm really... <laughs> you know it. <laughs> uh, but I'd like to, to thank the Allen family. Um, I'd like to thank the Golden family. My brothers, in, in their absence, they, they send their wishes. Stephen called me this morning and speak to me in Lent, uh, spoke to me in Lent. So um, to my sister-in-laws, not my 
not my, I don't know, adopted sister nonsense, my <laughs> sister, Karen, thank you, thank you so much for being here. But this family, the Allen family, I'm not going to, and, and Bennett, thank you, and Bennett, they have been really, I don't know, it's a different, it's a different gravy, it's strange, it's like there's a, there's a, a, a natural connection between this family and myself, I don't know. It's weird, but I embrace it and I thank you guys for accepting me and, you know, me being myself, not putting on a show for anybody else. Thank you for accepting me and understanding who I am. And that's a, a, that's a massive blessing for me and I'd like to thank the Thomases and Peter Ann. <laughs> thank you, Peter Ann. Thank you. Thank you, Lady Gillian. Thank you, Bishop Everton. Thanks to every officer here, every, every person here who has shared with us. Um, my final bit of thank you goes to my, my dream girl. <laughs> hey, you know, when I was in, I, I'm gonna share something very intimate with, with everybody here because we're family now. So when, when I was in college, man, I was stupid. So, I, I made a lot of decisions based on an impulse. But there's one thing that I prayed for more than anything. And I, and I talked to her about, about it all the time, and she laughs at me sometimes. But it, that's how it goes, but you know. So I would be at my bedside, and for years I'd be praying for a woman that fears the Lord, a woman that I can build my life with, a woman that I trust with my life, a woman that understands the value of family, understand the value of developing uh, uh, avenues together, communicating everything together, doing and, and, and saying, and, and, and I found this woman. It blows my mind, even though I'm still asking her if this is real. That's, I, even right now, I still just ask her if it's real. Right? But I love her with, with all my heart, with all my soul. It's my best friend. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't want to cry. <laughs> but um, I have a small song for her. Many of you don't know I, I can sing or if I can't sing, you be the guest, you know. Um, all right, so I'm going to sing so high, a small portion of it by John Legend. I think this really <sighs> speaks to me and her. I don't know. Uh, this phone is closed now. I, um, all right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Baby, ever since you came into my life, you made me realize that I was born to fly. You showed me every day new possibilities. You proved my fantasies of what love can really be. So let's go to a place only lovers go To a spot that we never know On top of a cloud we're flowing away Ooh, you feel amazing And all oh, this love is blazing Baby, we'll stay high Floating on clouds So high, so high, hey. Maybe later we could go up to the moon or sail above the stars before the night is through. 
And when the morning comes, we'll see the sun not so far. And we'll go to a place just you and I. We'll go to a place only lovers go. To a spot that we never know. On top of a cloud, we're floating away. Amazing, and all oh, this love is blazing, and baby, we'll stay high, floating on cloud nine, so high, so So um, after all of that, you, you determine. Can I see? No. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> hey, Karen is asking where the money is, so I'm singing lessons. <laughs> hey, man, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, thank you, each and every person. Thank you, baby, for loving me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And God bless you, each and every person. God bless you. Thank you for sharing this moment with me and RJ. And you, Goldings. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And before I go, before I go, there is one man here. Uh, well, two guys here. Courtney Golding and Monroe Allen. Could you please stand? Before I go, before I go, could you please stand? Yeah. These two men, I grew up seeing one, and I grew up with one. And I've seen both of them, how they have shaped me in their own way. I've seen my father, who was put up with me for years and really we had moments where we really fought but it really shaped me into being a man a man that cares for a woman that treats a woman right you know and understands the value of love and I see a man here by the name of Monroe Allen that has become like my second dad. <laughs> so it's strange. It's like uh, we're the same person. It's, it's strange. We like the same things, do the same actions. He always stands up. That's how I stand up. That's strange. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I've seen how he, he embodied how he treats RJ, how he treats Sarai, how he treats uh, Lady Jan. And I really say that he is a man. So, so two men, stalwarts in my life. Thank you for standing with me in every way. Thank you. And every person here that has participated in the program and making it a beautiful evening from every person on the program or, or the persons working here, you're beautiful. Thank you for an awesome service. Thank you for the food. It's been and on behalf of my wife. Yes, sir. <laughs> on behalf of my wife, just thank you, thank you. I don't know if she wants to say something. I, I, she's, she's my queen, so she must have something to say. Let's go. Wow, what can I say after all of that? But it's truly an honor to have each and every one of you here from near and far. We love you, we appreciate you, we, we see you, we see all the contributions that were made, the gifts, the well wishes, the blessings, we all love you, we, we thank you for the support, um, and we just want to big up Mummy especially. Um, many of you may not have known, Mummy was an integral part in the planning of this wedding. 
In fact, uh, before she transitioned, she pulled me aside each and every day, and I even had to snap at her and say, Mom, <laughs> focus on getting better. Why, why are we talking about this now? But she knew what she had in her mind, and she wanted to ensure that it was executed well. So I just want to acknowledge Mom in her absence physically, but she's here spiritually. Thank you, yes. <laughs> We miss her dearly, but it's truly an honor. And to my loving father, boy. Whew, I don't even want to go down that road because I'm not going to cry. <laughs> but really, Dad, I really love you. And uh, <sighs> we wouldn't have been able to um, even have such an amazing day without you and to Jilly, Peter Ann, Bishop Everton, Bishop Otto, of course, my in-laws, uh, my family, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. It's just, it's overwhelmingly, it's an overwhelming feeling of joy and happiness to know that you have so much support and love from all over the world. We didn't ask, we didn't have to ask, but it's such an amazing feeling to know that the journey that we walk is not alone. It's always with someone encouraging us to keep our head up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to keep our head up and to just believe that God is still in control. <laughs> And to my grandmothers, <laughs> Shirley Bennett, <laughs> I cannot end this day without bringing up my grandmother. She too is an integral part in the planning and execution of this day. You know, the love and support and my God, the food, hallelujah. I just want to take the time to just delve into the ministry that the Lord has blessed her with Amen. in the seasoning and the marinating of the my God hallelujah when she touches the pork and the fish and she gets into the pot and she lifts her hand and sprinkles the flour over the fried chicken and then when she kneads the dough to ensure that oh my god i don't want to get into it but i know my god is a god because he touched this lady right here he said lady i'm gonna bless you with the gift of cooking my god and when that cooking that food goes into your mouth and it passes your trachea and it goes deep down to tuck their stomach and then it fills the nutrients of your body I just know hello you see me oh yes I'm wet fed and that's okay but I know the God I serve because she's still cooking and she's cooking real good so God is a good God I have to big up grandma Benny come on grandma go ahead and stand <laughs> Yes, yeah, she's shy, but it's okay. You all see. Hallelujah. And to Grandma Allen, my God, if you want to see vigilance, whew, vigilance, I'm telling you, if you want to see what vigilance looks like in a person, just check with Grandma Allen. <laughs> And, you know, Grandma Allen is such, she's also a tower of strength. Man, she is there every time you need her, all right? She's always there, and I'm grateful for Grandma Allen. To everyone, we may not remember all of you by name, we apologize, but it's, we love you, we love you, we love you, we thank you. And we also honor you for everything that you have done. It's a blessing. And on behalf of my husband, yeah, this guy right here looking dashing, of course. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone to the wedding party. You guys have been so supportive, so amazing. <laughs> so, so amazing. And once again, to everyone, we thank you, we love you. God bless you. Uh, to the groomsmen, to the groomsmen, 
and the bridesmaids. Thank you for standing up with my baby here. And gentlemen, thank you for standing up with me. My best man, Siobhan, uh, my MC, and mentor in a way, <laughs> Bishop Everton Thomas. Uh, we thank you, the, the artists and musicians. Um, I really don't want to disrespect anyone by not mentioning you. So I'm trying to remember every single person. That's it? That's all right, all right. All right, God bless you. Thanks for coming. Um, <laughs> all right, um, our honeymoon begins now. So God bless you and my friend Christian. God bless you. Well, there remains one thing to be done. But before we have the throwing of the bouquet, they have to do the garter trigger. So, Tavari, I don't know where you're going to do it. Everybody can see. I think she needs to be seated. And then you have to hunt for that garter. And, but put your hands together for them. What an amazing couple's reply. And I, I didn't know, Mother Bennett, I didn't know you were such a cook. I mean, I, I know, you know, most women cook. But we should get together and cook sometimes because... No, no, serious. I'm a religious cook, guys. Ask my wife. I am a religious cook. Because every time I cook, it's a sacrifice. And all you get are burnt offerings. I'm a religious cook, man. We have to get together, mommy. And do some cooking. You can teach me a thing or two. <laughs> so here, they're ready now for the Garter Tribute. So let's see if he's going to stick his head under that gown. You're legal now in a boss. Legit. Down on his knees. And he's inching, inching closer and closer. And he picks up the hem of her garment. You're not going to look under there to see if you see it easier to her. <laughs> So he's, he's checking the other leg. <laughs> you found it? All right, all right, all right. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, he got it. He got it, he got it. He found it. I, I kid you not, as you pull that out, it seemed like you were about to put it in your pocket. And this is a true story. I was doing a wedding. I've done over 300 weddings now in my few years. And I was doing a wedding at Slyford. And true story. And the groom, like I have a hanky here. When he pulled out his hanky, I'm not kidding. I, I don't lie. It was a panty. I'm serious. I'm serious. I, I nearly fainted, man. But he was just. I kept wondering why he was drying his nose so much, you know. And then, then he put it. And I'm serious. I'm, I wouldn't, I'm, this is not made up stuff. So when I saw you about to put the guard in your pocket or something as a boy, I, that just came back to me. And I went to him after I said, what? Is that what I thought it was? Is that what I think it is? And he looked at me and smiled. I said, <laughs> Anyway, anyway, so now we're going to have the throwing of the bouquet. <laughs> and I still have a bunch of keys here. Uh, Tevari, do you know whose keys these are? <laughs> no. Please. Thank you. So all the ladies, the single ladies, who would like an opportunity to catch the bouquet, please come. Mr. Music, are you ready? Please come and line up. Where, where, where will you be? About there? And obviously, she's going to throw it behind her. Come on, come on. Come on, single ladies. Brides, bridesmaids, if you're single. Come 
Come on, come on, come on. Thank you again on behalf of this beautiful couple for coming to share in this special occasion with them. We want to wish them and assure them of our prayers as they work to build a maximum marriage. Because marriage will work if you work to make it work. God bless you all the best and God bless you each and every one. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you, get home safely. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Get home safely. We're gonna have some celebration, music and photos and well wishes. All the best, thank you, thank you.
pull up to Coachella. And who's with the ghost fellas? I brought the squad with me. Black on black bandanas. I say a champagne. I did the damn thing. Who did Diana? Singing and dancing all in the way. Just turn around. 